Matthew chapter 28, story of the resurrection, and we are going to read down to verse 10, and the message this morning is, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. As we read down through, notice, I mean the disciples that never sunk in, Jesus had told them that he was going to rise up from the grave, but it never sunk in. Still doesn't sink in uh, to many people. The world hasn't realized. Um, but notice all the fear, all the fear involved in this story as they go to the grave and they think that the one that they had trusted would be the Messiah, the promised one, the one that was going to be their king. They believed he's going to set the kingdom up right then, though Jesus had said, the kingdom of God is in your heart. And he said that my kingdom is not of this world. And he told parables, uh, teaching that he was going to come back. He was going to come back. He was going to die on the cross. Then he's going to come back and reign as king. But it didn't sink in. And they are so afraid of all that is going on. And Jesus tells them, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Let's read in Matthew chapter 28. And we're going to look, we're going to glance over uh, at um, Mark's account. But in Matthew chapter 28, begins in the end of the Sabbath. As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. I love that, how he just sits upon it. And this is done. Christ arose from the grave. It says, His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. The angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. Galilee was a place of ministry. The Lord Jesus arose, and he told his disciples uh, several times, I want you to meet me in Galilee, because he wanted to impress on their hearts. Now he has arose, he's alive, and the disciples are to start ministering like he ministered. Get busy. Jesus walked the shore of Galilee, calling Peter and James and John, and uh, Jesus called men to follow him, and now he lives and wants us to be calling people to follow him. It says in verse 8, And they departed quickly with, from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. I always say, oh, don't you just long to... Uh, long for the day when we'll be in heaven with the Lord and we can sit at his feet and we can hold him by his feet and worship him. Verse 10, Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there they shall see me. Look over in Mark. Mark chapter 16. And beginning in verse 5, it also mentions how fearful they were. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. He saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way and tell his disciples, and Peter, that and, and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. 
And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, where they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. They were afraid. They didn't know what to think. Uh, it's just too, it's too amazing. Everything is going on. Uh, they are filled with fear. Turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke's account of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Luke, and beginning in verse 5 in Luke 24, it says, and as they were afraid, there's still, a, I mean, it's, uh, every story is saying how they were so afraid. As they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. And so we know that clearly from these gospel accounts that the disciples and the women that uh, came to Jesus' tomb, they were so afraid. Uh, they found it empty. The angel told them to, you know, come and see that uh, he had a rose, but it, it wasn't sinking in. But as the, the story progresses, and as we come to the book of Acts, we see that because the Lord Jesus had uh, appeared to them over the course of 40 days and taught them. And uh, now they had gone from being, uh, gone from fearfulness to fearlessness. As they realized that Jesus was alive, that he is the Savior, he is God, and he's victorious over the tomb. They went from fearfulness to fearlessness. We live in a day when uh, it's, people are so fearful. So fearful. Um, Beric and I, we decided that, you know, this is Easter, Easter Sunday. Um, we decided that uh, we haven't been around to invite kids for a while, but Things to see is, is just seeming like um, a lot of us just aren't, we, we're just, we're not too worried. How do I say it? We're not too worried about coronavirus. Uh, it's been over a year. I know that when it first started out, it was pretty scary. And then there were some ups and downs, but. We thought it might be to the point where we could encourage some kids to come out. We miss so much running the bus. Uh, so we went out a few places yesterday. Um, and you know, people are still afraid. They're still very fearful. And People, uh, it makes me think uh, Hebrews chapter, turn to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Look at this passage in Hebrews chapter 2. Talking about the Lord Jesus coming for us. In Hebrews chapter 2, beginning in verse 14, it says, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Just saying Jesus, God, came down to put on flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he became just like we are. Um, it says that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death. That is a devil. The Lord Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. What was the works of the devil? Uh, caused Adam and Eve to fall into sin. And therefore, everybody's fallen into sin. And everybody separated from God. Everybody headed toward hell. And Jesus came to take our sins upon him. Destroy the power of death and the devil. 
to rise again. But look at verse 15. It says, and to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. People that fear death all their lifetime. This death just hangs over them. Uh, they're so afraid. I've mentioned, uh, uh, as an illustration before, I've mentioned Andy Rooney. Some of you remember Andy Rooney was famous for doing 60 Minutes. He do a commentary in 60 Minutes. And I saw an interview with him, and the man was uh, up probably in his 70s. And uh, in the interview, they said, I hear that you have a fear of death. And he says, I have such a fear of death. Uh, and I've, I've, you know, I've tried in so many ways to work through it, and, uh, but he, can't, he couldn't come to a peace. He was so fearful of death. Well, Jesus came to take that fear away. And Jesus came so that we can look in the tomb. We can look at the grave. You can uh, look at the grave of a loved one that, knows the Lord Jesus, has trusted Jesus, and know that death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. You don't have to live in fear. Uh, Psalm 23 tells us, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's what life is. It is the valley of the shadow of death. You never know when it's coming. You never know what, uh, you know, what's going to happen. You don't know when the day might be, but the psalmist says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. If you know the Lord is your Savior, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And as we that know the Lord uh, walk with him every day and, and come in contact with people that don't know the Lord, uh, we can tell them about the Lord Jesus and tell them that in Jesus, they receive the Lord Jesus, there's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. But we live in such a day where people are so afraid. I like 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And verse 7 says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. How is that? How has God given us uh, such a mind, a spirit of power, and love and a sound mind? How did the Lord take fear away? Well, down in verse 10, it says, But now is made manifest, by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. I like the way God puts that. He's abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Jesus has abolished death. We, I said, uh, we went out visiting. I had actually, we didn't visit some places. Because I ran into one parent a couple months ago now and talking to him, and he was saying, I don't even let my kids go to school. I'm afraid they're going to go to school and get coronavirus, and they'll come home, and I'll get it, and I'll die. And uh, yesterday we drove, in, we drove into uh, someone's driveway, and before... Before we was even getting out of the car, the, the mother was, uh, uh, she was just getting us out of her car. She's sitting in the yard there. I could see in her eyes, like, she's not going to let her son come. There's no way. And we got out of the car, and she, before she even said hi, she said, he's not going to come for a while. He's not going to come for a while. Uh, people are so afraid. Well, fear, you know, fear is not trusting God. Fear is not trusting God. That's what it all boils down to. And it is, it is only God who can deliver us.
from our fears. When Jesus was born, the Christmas story, when Jesus was born, the angel said unto the shepherds, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Fear not. When Jesus arose from the grave, it's the same message as the angels once again said, fear not. And then Jesus comes and says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. We trust in the Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, eternal, unchanging God who is victorious over death in the grave. What have we to fear? We have nothing to fear but God himself. There's two kinds of fear. Two kinds of fear. There's the right kind of fear where the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. There's that kind of fear, the right kind of fear that honors God and it draws us to God. Then there's the wrong kind of fear that dishonors God, doesn't obey God, and that kind of fear draws away from God, draws people away from God. Uh, well, we want the right, we want the right kind of fear, and we want to, we want to just hate the wrong kind of fear. We just want to fear God and be fearless in every other area. Fearless. Are you, are you a fearless Christian? Are you courageous? Are you bold? Uh, do you realize that uh, in Jesus? What do you got to fear? I want to uh, just mention three, uh, three areas here. Don't be afraid. Three areas from our story this morning of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Uh, don't be afraid. Number one, don't be afraid of believing in Jesus. The disciples, well, the women first, they came to the tomb. Uh, read the men run later to the tomb. Uh, they don't know what to think. And they're afraid. And then the Lord appears to them and teaches them and appears to them and eats with them and appears to them and just keeps teaching them over the course of 40 days before he ascends up to heaven. Um, and their fearfulness, we said, turns to fearlessness, and they believe on the Lord Jesus. Don't be afraid of believing in Jesus. The Bible tells us Jesus showed that he was alive. He showed, he proved. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Got to see this first. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. The Bible says that Jesus proved that he arose from the grave. He proved that he was alive. You know, you'll read, uh, the, you know, they'll call people, they'll say they're scholars or they're uh, archaeologists or uh, they're biblical historians, whatever they'll say they are, and they'll say, you know, we really don't know all the facts. We don't know all the, uh, we don't know everything about uh, Jesus, we don't know about, you know, they'll say whether we really arose in the grave. Uh, yes, we do. The Bible tells us that Jesus showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. His best friends, his closest friends, were willing to die for the fact that they knew Jesus arose from the grave. His best, closest friends are the ones that wrote the scriptures, that wrote the gospel, that wrote about him. 
And some of these historians, they want to try to say, oh, what, uh, uh, we, don't want to just, we don't want to look at the Bible. We want to look at uh, what we can dig up somewhere. Uh, that would be like if somebody said, well, I want to know, I want, I want to know about Pastor Beckford, but I don't want to ask his wife. I don't want to ask his son or, or his daughters. I don't want to ask them. I want to go ask somebody else what they might have heard about him. Uh, God has given us the exact, accurate, perfect account right here in his word, a first-hand account, what Peter says. What does Peter say in is it Second Peter? Turn to Second Peter. Or is it First Peter? We'll... we'll We'll know when we get there. It is Second Peter. Second Peter. And chapter one and verse sixteen. I like here also we ought we ought to read what Paul by what Peter is saying here, uh, Peter was fearless about death. He wasn't worried about death. He said, and verse 14, Peter says, Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle. That is a tent. Peter looked at death just like, okay, I live in this tent. My body's like a tent. And won't be long, I'm going to fold this tent up and move on to heaven. And he wasn't worried because he knew that his faith was in the Lord Jesus and he's just going on to glory. And so Peter says, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me, moreover I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Peter's saying that while I live, I'm going to do everything I can to teach you so that when I'm gone, you'll remember the things about Jesus. You will remember. And then Peter says in verse 16, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter said, We saw these things with our very own eyes. We know, we know that Jesus arose from the grave. We know that he's alive. John said the same thing, and uh, turn over a few pages to uh, 1 John chapter 1. John starts out his epistle, and he says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. John said, we saw that Jesus was alive. We handled him. Uh, Thomas, uh, Jesus told Thomas to put your fingers in the print of the nails and thrust your hand into my side. Uh, they knew that Jesus was alive. It says, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Don't be afraid of believing in Jesus. Don't be afraid. The disciples, at first, they were afraid, but then they knew, they knew for sure that Jesus arose from the grave. Jesus proved it. Jesus also offered the resurrection as a proof that he was God. Turn to Matthew. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. All through the Gospels, and we'll just take Matthew uh, as an example this morning, all through the Gospels, when the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, the scribes, it was the religious crowd. You know, it's religion. Uh, Jesus stood against religion. The Old Testament was all against religion. All these false religions out there, uh, God was against them. And... God still is against them today. He's just for 
The simple gospel that Christ died on the cross for our sins, was raised again for our justification, and you put your trust in him as your savior. It's not about religion. It's about, just like what we heard in Sunday school this morning, it's about walking with God, knowing God as your personal savior. And so much of the religion out there, you go through it, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormonism and uh, Catholicism and and uh, just many Christian scientism and, and on and on, many of them, they don't say all you need to do is trust in Jesus as your Savior. They say, well, you got to join our group and you got to follow our rules and you got to give, give your money, make sure you give your money, all the money, you will take the all we can get. And on and on and on, Jesus was against religion, and it was the religious group that crucified him. Salvation is by faith, just simple trust in what Jesus did on the cross. It's repent of, repent of realizing you're a sinner separated from God, and that Jesus took all your sins upon him, and he died on the cross in your place and rose again, and just believe it on him. And that, we turn to Matthew, because Jesus, when, when the religious group said, prove, prove that you're God, prove that you're the Savior. Well, you know what Jesus offered for proof. You know what he offered. He said, destroy this body. Three days, I'll rise it up. I'll raise it up. Now, like, think of that. Nobody else. The Bible says, you know, uh, there's only one way to heaven because there's only one Jesus. There's only one way to heaven because there's only one person, the Lord Jesus, that proved that he is God. And Jesus, just, uh, who else could make such a claim? Uh, the Bible says, I am the Lord and there is none else. I'm the Lord and there is none else. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40. Jesus said, for as jo Jonas, Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Look at chapter Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. It says, from that time forth began Jesus to show his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Chapter 17 and verse 23. It says, They shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. And chapter 20, Matthew chapter 20 and verse 19. Well, you begin in verse, uh, verse 18. Jesus said, Behold, we go to Jerusalem. The Son of Man shall betray, be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify, and the third day he shall rise again. Chapter 27. Chapter 27 and verse 40. Even as Jesus hang on, hung on the cross, they were mocking him because they said that, because they knew that Jesus had said, if you destroy me, if you kill me, I'll rise again. So on the cross it says, likewise, the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. If he trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And turn uh, down to, we'll just look down to verse 63. After the Lord died, um, they go into Pilate, verse 63, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. And then he did it. He did it. 
the Lord Jesus, up from the grave, he arose. And he proved that he is the Son of God. Don't be afraid. Don't be fearful to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He proved it. He proved that he is God. He proved that he is the Savior beyond shadow of doubt. Turn back to Matthew chapter 28, where we started out. And verse 10, where Jesus said, Be not afraid. Jesus said, Be not afraid. Then he said, Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee. But go tell my brethren. Second thing not to be afraid of is don't be afraid of telling about Jesus. Don't be afraid about telling about Jesus. The disciples, as we said, they started out fearful, not knowing what to think. But as you come to the book of Acts, uh, nothing can stop them. Nothing can stop them. They're going to tell the whole world that Jesus is the Savior. They're going to tell no matter what. They're going to tell in spite of uh, being beaten and stoned and thrown into prison. Uh, they are going to tell the world that Jesus has arose, that he is the Savior. Matthew chapter uh, 28 the end of the chapter, verse 8, Jesus told his disciples, it says, Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, amen. And the disciples realize that. They realize he's alive, uh, he's with me. And the book of Acts starts out where Jesus ascends up to heaven before them, and then they are praying for God's power. And then, throughout the book of Acts, they just start preaching that Jesus arose. They go everywhere preaching, Jesus arose. And just to look at a sample of what they were preaching, turn to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 and 4. It goes all through the book of Acts, they are preaching that Jesus lives and Jesus saves. Uh, Acts chapter 3, they were going into the temple and there was a certain lame man uh, that was laid at the gate called Beautiful and... Uh, Peter and John, they, through the power of the Lord Jesus, they healed, they healed that man. And in Acts chapter 3, um, when every one of the people, they pe the people see that this man was healed. And in verse 12, it says, uh, when Peter saw it, that is, he saw all the people were all excited uh, that this man had been healed, and all the people had gathered together. Uh, to hear Peter, it says, When Peter saw it, he answered all the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. That was the disciples' attitude all through the book of Acts. They just go out preaching. He arose. He did, Jesus did just like he said. He arose. He lives. And because he lives, we can live. Because he lives, the Bible says, he that, he that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And they just went out preaching that he had, he had arose in the grave. So when you get to chapter 4, Look at the boldness. Look at the courage of these disciples going out preaching that Jesus arose. 
Uh, Acts chapter 4 says, And they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees. These are these religious leaders. They should be the leaders. The religious leaders, they should be the leaders. Jesus said it was the blind leading the blind about the religious leaders of his day. It was the blind leading the blind. And so you've got these uh, seemingly ignorant and unlearned men, but they had learned at the feet of Jesus. And they're going out preaching, it said, but the religious leaders, it says, verse 2, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They didn't like that. The world still doesn't like that we preach that Jesus arose from the grave. Why doesn't the world like that we preach Jesus arose from the grave. Well, it's against the whole world system. The social, you know, social, the whole social, socialism is built on a hatred for God, a hatred for the Bible, and socialism is based on what we call materialism that says that there is no eternity. So you just better take, it doesn't matter what you do in this life now, you just, you grasp and grab and, and do what you want to do to get some pleasure out of this life now. doesn't matter if you trample people. It doesn't matter. Uh, we've got to get the control of the power now because now is all there is. That's what socialism says. That's what the world system says today. And God comes along and says, no. If you know me, you live for all eternity. There's eternal life. And there's uh, joy, eternal joy. And, it's, and that it does matter. Living for God does matter. And it's what it's all about, living for God. Well, they didn't like. You imagine religious leaders that don't, they're grieved. They don't like that the disciples are preaching that Jesus lives. And they don't like it. Well, it says they laid hand verse 3, they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. Came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, about what, uh, by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rules of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? It's like Peter's way of saying, What are you all upset about? We just we heal the man that was a cripple. Why are you all upset? Doesn't matter how much good. It didn't matter how much good the disciples did, and uh, really the world doesn't matter. It doesn't. They don't care how much good Christians may do. They just don't want to hear about God. And here. Uh, Peter, Peter's not going to slow down. Peter's not going to stop. In verse 10 he says, Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom he crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you, here before you whole. He just tells them, Jesus arose. Jesus arose. Verse 11, he says, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. That is, they're saying that the stone that was supposed to be the foundation of the building, the cornerstone, which everything was planned and, and built according to that cornerstone. They took it, and it was the Lord Jesus. And they took that stone. We don't want that stone. We don't want that building. They took it and cast it aside. And the disciples said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby ye must be saved. And the disciples just preached fearlessly. 
that Jesus arose from the grave. Don't be afraid of believing in Jesus. Don't be afraid of telling about Jesus. Lastly, don't be afraid of dying in Jesus. Don't be afraid of dying. The Bible we looked at, we mentioned Peter. Peter said, I've got to shortly put off this tabernacle. It's just like folding a tent up. We're in the Lord's hands. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, uh, death is just going home to be with God. Uh, look what Paul said in Philippians. Look at Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, Paul says, and verse 21, beginning in verse 21, Paul says, for for me to die is Christ and to die is gain. To die is gain. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? When you do die, it's just gain. Going to heaven. He says in verse 23, he says, For I am in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. The life that is to come is far better. But, Paul says, verse 24, nevertheless to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. A couple years ago, uh, Gary and Dorcas were here, uh, Stevens, and Gary just found out he had cancer. They didn't know what, they didn't know what was going to happen, and Gary was saying, well, I'm ready. I'll just go home to heaven. It's fine with me. And Dorcas was like, but I need you here. I want you. You know, I was saying to Gary, you, even Pastor Paul even said, it's more needful for me to abide. Uh, you, want, you want your loved ones to stick around as long as they can. Uh, we need our loved ones. We need one another. But the fact still is, to die is gain. To die is gain. And to be with Christ is far better. The Apostle Paul had that attitude uh, right up till the end. Look in uh, 2 Timothy. Paul's talking about it was getting close. It was time for him to depart. And Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, he says, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Paul said, I'm not afraid. It's my time. I'm, I'm going, and I'm going to get a crown of righteousness because he was righteous in Christ. Tr Jesus was his righteousness. He wasn't trusting in his own works to save him. So, don't be afraid. That's the message of the resurrection. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be worried. You don't, uh, don't be afraid to believe in Jesus. Don't be afraid to tell others about Jesus. Uh, don't be afraid when your time comes to die in Jesus. It might be uh, intimidating. I remember my mother-in-law, when she was going home to be with the Lord, she said, uh, to the extent, I'm not afraid, but I haven't, I've, I've never done this before. She was like, this is something new, this is something different. But she knew she was going to be with the Lord Jesus. Don't be afraid of dying in Jesus. But if you don't know Jesus, be afraid. Be afraid. Uh, Jesus made that clear. Let's close. Look at Luke chapter 12. Last passage we'll look at. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 4. Jesus said, and I say unto you, my friends, we had a uh, good message in Sunday school Barrett gave about Jesus. The Bible tells us Jesus is a friend of sinners. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves soul, souls. 
uh, Jesus is our friend, but it's so obvious that the world's not his friend. The world's not his friend, and they don't want him for their friend. Um, but Jesus said unto you, it says, I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Fear him. Are not five sp sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of heaven. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. We've got nothing to fear if we know the Lord Jesus as Savior. But if we don't know the Lord Jesus as Savior, we should fear death and hell. Because without him, there's no hope. And I hope that each one of you here has received the Lord Jesus as your Savior. And if you haven't, I'd love to talk to you. Um, or if you have any Bible questions or anything, I can... I don't have all the answers, but I can look in the Bible, because the Bible has all the answers. And um, God is so good, He'll, he helps us along the way. But we can be fearless. Let's pray.